Well, can you guess what I'm doing today? This is my method of muskrat trapping. In North Dakota, we can open up the huts, put the trap in there, cover it back up. So this is my method. The stick is just to keep the trap from going away. Go through all these and see what needs to be done. I may put some new chains on them. What a mess. I don't think I have time to wax and dye, although maybe, maybe. Sort through them, usually make a pile of good ones, usually make a pile of ones I'll use in case I'm in a pinch. I've got all different kinds. These are pretty good traps. These are Victor number ones, I believe. Or are they number zero? I think they're number one. Oneida Victor, OV. Bought these probably 15 years ago, not 20, 20 years ago. Quite honestly, they're my newest, my newest muskrat traps. They're coil spring, they got quite a bit of power behind them for a little trap. You can adjust the pan tension with the bolt. And my favorite design, favorite part of the design is the double jaw. Doesn't necessarily keep the animal from um, getting out any differently, but it prevents them from chewing on their foot. Ouch. Okay, where to start? Here, we got an old Victor underspring. Oneida Jump. Registered U.S. Patent Office. Made in USA, something Willits, Pennsylvania. Well, isn't that neat? How neat is that? That's pretty neat. These are probably my favorite muskrat traps, though. Long springs, can't get enough of them. They sit inside the hut a little better, easier to reach down in there, easier to bed in, easy to set. Not, not as much power, a little bit slower, but for a muskrat, you don't need all that power and speed. Here's a bigger jump. Can't see a number on them for a size. Oh, this is number one. So if this is number one, this is number one. What size is this? Number zero, I would assume. Long spring. There's only one man who would dare give me the raspberry. Lone Star. All right, we got Victor Traps. This is a number one. V is in the middle. S slightly smaller trap. I think it's a number zero. Jump trap. All these are jump traps. V is at the bottom. Item number three. Number zero, Victor, V, is on the end, on the edge, outside. What's it all mean? I don't know. I'm fairly certain the, the V in the middle is the newest, most recent. And the other two, I'm not sure. Anyways. And it doesn't appear that it was a pan that was cut down. It appears to be original size. 
Kind of interesting. I'm sure I paid big money for those. At least two, at least three dollars. Maybe four. Wish I had a million dollars. Hot dog! Oh, well, we got some one and a half Victor coil spring. Square pan, V in the middle. These are not that old. Victor, one and a half. These are on the large side for muskrats. I do believe these would work fine for coon or fox. I don't know. Maybe a little bit weak for fox. I don't know. Maybe weak for coon. I don't know. We're going to put that in the only use when necessary pile. Just a little bit too much. Too much for my taste. I do believe this is a number zero trap. Mmm, this is a number one and a half pan. At any rate, the pan is way larger than what's supposed to be on there. Dying and waxing of these would sure do it some good. We'll have to see what kind of time we have. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. We're burning daylight. All right, fellas. Let me teach you a thing or two about a thing or two. If you look at these two traps, number one, Victor Long Spring. At first glance, you're not going to notice any difference. But if you get closer and you look at the pans, V's in the middle, pay attention right there between the the center of the pan and the trigger I'll show you the next one center of the pan trigger this one's hopefully you can see that the pan is what they call stamped on there. It's pressed on there. It's pinched. Not stamped, but pinched. So basically the pan lies on the trigger and then somebody comes along and whacks it with a hammer. Or I don't know how they did it. And so the only thing holding this pan on is this squished, mushroomed top. Now look at the springs. One is just a hair shorter than the other. The one with the pinch pan is going to be older. Now let me set them so that you can see the differences in the jaws. See the the short one, this one here, has more of a square jaw. It's more square on the all the way around. This one has more of a square here, but it's rounded down here. Just wanted to show you, not everything is equal. What I'm always looking for too on Victor's, I noticed that some of them on the long spring will say um, S Newhouse and then I, th I believe it's S Newhouse Oneida or S Newhouse Victor Trap Company and those are the older older traps Samuel Newhouse kind of the founder of Victor Traps or Oneida I should say he was the founder of the Oneida Trap, and Oneida Trap made Victor Traps. Very common, most common traps around here when you go to old barns and, and auction sales and stuff. The, the, the Victors, which you always see here. Um, the uh, herders 
uh, they must have retailed their traps over further in, I don't know, Wisconsin or someplace. I, I don't know, but you don't see many herders in this general area. And all it came down to is, is who was selling, selling them. Not that one was better than the other. Interesting stuff. I'm halfway as tempted to retire this one because it's older. It's got the pinch pan, but eh, we'll use it. Just try to be careful with it. It's got a really strong spring. It's actually stronger than most of the longer, um, longer springs. I don't know if that's just because it hasn't been used as much or if, if that's the design of it. Okay. Muskrats may be hard to come by this year. Had a dry year. Not seeing too many huts out there. There are a couple places where there are more huts in a slough than there ever was before, but then you go for, you, you find 10 more sloughs that had rats in there a couple of years ago, and there's nothing in there now. So we'll have to see how it goes. I remember getting seven dollars and some cents for muskrats on the carcass remember the fur buyer on the phone said he was offering seven dollars for rats and i didn't I, st I still don't really care but i know i didn't care i just wanted to get rid of them before they spoiled they were on the carcass and a couple days later when i met with him he looked at him and he said I'm not even going to count your. I'm not even going to check your count. I'm not going to go through them. He said, "I'm just going to offer you seven dollars and fifty cents." I think it was fifty cents more than what he told me on the phone. So I wasn't going to argue that. Things are a little bit different now. I think I'm seeing about three fifty or something like that average, four four fifty. So here's a. I don't know, number, I think it's a number zero jump. Pretty small. I don't know what it must have been in a pinch. I put a number one and a half pan on there. I guess it works. It needs to be lowered. Oh, but maybe I can't lower it. Let's try. I probably don't have, oh yeah, that helped. It might work. There's not much, not much space between the edge of the pan there and the jaw, but we're talking about muskrats here. We're gonna give it a whirl. All right, let's see what we got up here in the uh, old, old pile. That's something. That's something. That's something. That's something. All kinds of goodies up there. This is one of my, this is just a neat little trap, I think. It's a Northwoods number zero. It's just tiny. I always thought, you know, I, I can imagine just a, a ten-year-old kid getting a half dozen of these for Christmas or something, and they're a little bit hard to set. This one's got some strong sp springs on it. It's probably never been used. I don't know. It's just tiny. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. This is what the old timers used for muskrats stop loss I've explained this before you basically have two sets of jaws this is your obviously your regular set and this one folds let's see here how does this work no, no, no. this one goes first and then you open up your regular jaws it's quite the contraption. Yes, there's a toilet! So then, 
when the trigger goes off, the jaws, the main jaws, close like they normally would. So, bam. And then what happens ooh, is this stop loss mechanism comes up and puts pressure against the animal's leg so that the animal can't sit there and twist is the thought behind it. I don't know. I always felt that they're too cumbersome to use. That's just my thoughts. Throw that back up there. This is a, a diamond brand number 21 long spring made in USA. It's a neat looking trap. This has got the double jaws on it. This would be a perfect muskrat trap. It says number 21. Sure looks about to be the size of a 20 or a number one. Pretty neat, I think. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. The pen on, on, on traps always sells me, especially when you can read read what it says. Diamond brand, made in USA, number 21, long spring, patented, Norwich, WI, I think, Wisconsin. Double jawed. I like it. Square rivet at the bottom. That one's too nice to use. Throw that back up there. Here's another stop loss. Oh, Blake and Lamb. Yeah. Throw that back up there. This one's new to me. I believe this is called the Kangaroo Trap. Made by Triumph. It's got a wing nut on there to adjust the pan tension. Easy to adjust out in the field, I guess. Not a bad idea. Riveted pan. Pan is riveted onto the trigger. But two under springs. Still pretty stiff. Dog's, dog is beat up on this one. There's that old school chain again. I can't read anything on the pan, but I do believe it's a kangaroo trap, which Triumph made. Well, that pan's got a little wobble to it. That could get fixed, though, by tightening up the, the bolt. I'd say that looks like a good cat, bobcat trap. A little larger pan on there, square jaws. I don't know. I'm not using it. Put that back up in the pile. Got this at a rummage sale for, I don't know, five bucks or something. I know it. Didn't pay very much for it. Buddy Jeff gave me this. This is a herders. These are common as the day is long. Probably a little heavier dutier than a Victor. Coil springs are definitely heavier. You know, like I, you know, I'm talking about like a, a Victor number two for whatever they made them for. They're a size for a coyote trap, but they're not heavy enough to use on a coyote. People use them for muskrats for drowning, but these are definitely, definitely heavier duty than the Victor number twos. Somebody filed off the edges of the edge of the pan so when the levers come up they don't hit the levers but base plate is weak oh this one's actually bent but you can base plate them put a d-ring in there for a center swivel the jaws are are strong enough i would say for a coyote the levers i don't know they they could be better and the coil springs are heavy duty though it's got some power to it i think the biggest flaw is you can see how obviously this isn't set perfect but that pan sticks way the heck up there i mean you compare that to an mb550 it's about the opposite the pan on an mb550 is 
an inch lower. I bet it is an inch lower than the than than what this setup is. So. But it's got enough power though. I, I feel confident that would hold the coyote. But we're not going to mess with it. That wraps it up for tonight. Maybe some other night we'll die and wax those. I hate waxing those long springs when they have no pan tension. But we'll have to just wax them and then take the wax off the, the dogs and the trigger. Okay, good night.